Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is May 7th, 2024. Let's talk NBA basketball. There's a prop out there that I think is a special prop in the Western Conference. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me be clear on how I see the Eastern Conference. I think there are the Boston Celtics and then there's everyone else. A healthy Boston Celtic team wins the Eastern Conference as I see it. Right? I'm not worried about the Knicks. I think Indy's interesting, but Indy can't hang defensively. Um, let's just say I understand the Cavs have a great head-to-head -head record against the Celtics. That's a concern, but the Cavs look like a one-man show. I don't think that's going to be enough against these Celtics, right? I am concerned about the Porzingis injury, especially since if the T-Wolves come out of the West, they're going to have, you know, two big men who are highly skilled. And uh, if you're Boston, you want to be prepared to deal with that by having your own bigs healthy, right? But make no mistake, I think Boston comes out of the East. In the West... Right? Let me just give my philosophy on betting basketball. Right? We'll use a boxing analogy. In boxing, you have a Deontay Wilder. You know he throws a big right hand. You understand that's his game. Right? Opponents can figure out how to deal with it. If you're fighting a Deontay Wilder, you know what you're up against. I believe the scariest fighters are the ones where you don't quite know what you're up against. One of the best things about Terrence Crawford is the fact that he's a man of mystery. Right? You look at him and you're, you ask yourself the question, what does Crawford do best? And you can look at a lot of Crawford fights and not quite have an answer. Right? To me, Crawford is like a Phantom Menace. Great name for a movie. It was a Star Wars movie a few years ago, right? Phantom Menace. The idea is you're fighting an enemy and you don't even quite know where the menace is coming from. Right? That Errol Spence fight was interesting. Crawford comes out, Spence is a lefty. Crawford comes out lefty. Crawford throws down one of boxing's better jabs. During the fight, as Crawford's bludgeoning Spence with this jab, you're thinking to yourself, man, I, I didn't even know Crawford had this jab. And, of course, Crawford is older than Canelo. <laughs> he's, he's been fighting for years. You're finding out about Crawford now. Now, let me just say, in my opinion, that T-Wolves Nugget series is over. If you want a masterpiece, look at the box score. Folks, it's, you know, teeth shaking. Now, understand, you had a three-time defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, not play because Rudy had a son last night. Right? His wife went into labor. So Rudy left the team with the team's blessing. Right? Keep in mind, the team's already up in the series. So, of course, on Denver's court, you had the T Wolves shorthanded without their best defensive player. What do they do? They hold the defending champions to 80 points on their home court. In game one, Michael Porter and Joker both played 40 minutes. You thought, wow, you know, they're going to have to rest them to stay alive in the series. But you understood. 
after having lost game one on their home court. That game two for Denver was really a game seven. Right? Understand how big the margin would be for the T-Wolves if they won game two. Right? They could lose a game at home and still close out the series in six if they were to win game two in Denver. Now understand, after playing 40 minutes in game one, yesterday, Porter and Joker each played 39 minutes. Folks, in other words, these guys were in heavy usage. Jamal Murray played 36 minutes. Now you know a team's in trouble when only one guy is getting assists. Right? When a lot of guys have a decent number of assists, you know the team's passing the ball. You know, folks were involved in the offense. Let's look at the Nuggets from yesterday's box score. Believe it or not, only one guy had more than two assists. And that was Joker. Joker has eight assists. Porter has two. Gordon has two, Murray has two, KCP has none, right? That's the way it was, right? They weren't passing the ball that much. Now let's segue to the T-Wolves. I need for folks to understand that Connolly has six assists. Anthony Edwards has seven assists. Kyle Anderson had eight assists, right? Understand, T-Wolves win the game by 26 points. They not only hold Denver to 80, the defending champions to 80 on Denver's court, but they score 106 points, win by 26, and just understand, only two guys on the T-Wolves played more than 35 minutes. One was Carl Anthony Towns, he played 36 minutes. The other was Anthony Edwards who played 37 minutes. Right, Kyle Anderson, 26. Jaden McDaniels, 26. Mike Connolly, 32. This is without Gobert. So the T-Wolves not only are the team up 2-0, the T-Wolves are the better rested team. And of course, they're going to get Rudy Gobert back later in this series. Folks, this series is over. Denver's reign as NBA champion has ended. Right? All you need now is to have it be made official. So you have a bet on the board that's a bit stunning to me. It's so mispriced. Right, the T-Wolves right now to win the Western Conference are going off at a minus 120. Sure, it's less than even money, but folks, it's close enough to even money or I'll take my chances. Right, keep in mind, <laughs> I had a futures prop on Minnesota and I was hedging against it. I bet on Denver. Right, after game one, I bet on Denver again. Right, folks, I'm no longer hedging. This series is a fait accompli. Now let's just think about Dallas versus OKC for a moment here. Right, folks, there's a possibility that this T-Wolves Nuggets series is over in four or five games. Right, if Gobert leaves the hospital... Don't you think T-Wolf Nation is going to be out in force in Game 3? Aren't they going to be smelling a sweep? I'm guessing when you look in the stands, you're going to have all kinds of old T-Wolves in the stands. Right? Garnett, I'll be shocked if he's not there. Marbury, I wouldn't be surprised if he's there. Right, folks, this is a long time coming for Minnesota. 
Just on emotion. You don't think Minnesota is going to win game three? You go up game, you know, you go up three games to none with this defense. Right? They were already one of the best defensive teams in the league. Right? As I've said before, Jordan, who averaged over 30 for his career, famously said, offense comes and goes. You should be able to play great defense every night. That's the mantra for this T-Wolves team. A great defensive team up 2-0, this series is over. So, let's start thinking about the T-Wolves against either Dallas or OKC. Now, for the season, you should know, against OKC, they were 2-2. Two and two. Right? OKC is the better offensive team. The T-Wolves are the better defensive team. OKC would have home court advantage. OKC is a little bit young for my taste. Right? But, let's just say the T-Wolves against OKC, that would be a battle. My point is, grab some of the minus 120 on the T-Wolves here. We'll worry about the OKC part of the bet once it becomes clear who wins that playoff series between OKC and Dallas. But here's what I think we know. The T-Wolves are going to be rested, aren't they? More rested than whoever wins this Dallas OKC series. Right? The T-Wolves are going to be ready for whoever wins that Dallas OKC series. Right? Let's talk about Dallas. Dallas played the T-Wolves four times this year. They lost three of them. Understand the T-Wolves already have a 75% winning percentage against the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks, too, are really a new team, aren't they? They were defensively challenged until late in the season when they started to click defensively. They're going up against a team that was always defensively blessed this year. Right? The T-Wolves have been a constant defensively. Right? I think the T-Wolves beat the Dallas Mavericks. I'll concede Kyrie Irving in the playoffs is spectacular. Right? Let's concede that. But Dallas already has lost the regular season series to them. Right? Let me also just say, too, that um, we need to figure out the Porzingis injury, don't we? If this is a, hey, Porzingis, you look a little bit tired. Oh, you got a little bit dinged. Take some time off. We don't need you until the Eastern Conference Finals. If, if this is one of those things, okay, well, whatever. Right? You know, uh, Boston will be at full strength. Um, let's just say in an NBA Finals, uh, Boston at full strength should concern everyone else. But if Porzingis is out, folks, that opens the door. Right? I mean, understand, I mentioned this before, late in games, it's hard to find someone foul if the T-Wolves are up, right? Let's say they get the ball inbounds to their point guard, Mike Connolly. He just went through a season where he hit more than 90% of his free throws, right? Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards hit more than 80% of their free throws, right? Just figure out that, you know, Anthony Edwards has a very high variance. What that means is uh, there are going to be games where he just takes over. Now the team is deep. Take the box score from yesterday. Edwards 27 points, Carl Anthony Towns 27 points. You had Walker and Reed with 14 points each. Right? The team's deep. The team doesn't heavily rely on Anthony Edwards for offense. Right? Understand, Cat hits more than 40% of his threes. That's how deep the team is. 
But just understand, there's going to be a game where Anthony Edwards shows up, drops 40 points, and decimates whoever they're playing. Right? The way I might play Boston against Minnesota is to take a lot of unders in those games because both of those teams are defensively blessed. Anyway, the T-Wolves are dangerously close to an NBA Finals. Uh, let's remember they've never gotten to the NBA Finals. Right? They're dangerously close now. I believe they are built by someone who has thought through psychology, right? Carl Anthony Towns is more Robin than Batman. Rudy Gobert, as offensively challenged as he is, is a leader. He's Batman. Anthony Edwards gets to be himself, right? He's free by the fact that these two big men are really the power structure, I think Edwards does better when the weight of the world are not on his shoulders. Right? Understand, that's very different than Jordan, who was an alpha figure from day one. Right? So, just food for thought, uh, this Wolves team, they've gotten by the defending champions. Now, we're all going to find out. Just how good the Oklahoma City Thunder are. Folks, they are offensively blessed. And unlike Indy, they actually play some defense. Let me say this too. I'm a Wemby fan. I think he's excellent. But it's a joke that he was unanimous. Right? You mean to tell me that people watch this season. Wemby, for Wemby to be in the playoffs, he'd have to buy a ticket. People watched this season, saw Chet Hulgren be a foundational part of leading the thunder of all teams to the one seed, right? Look, I know SGA is a foundational part as well, but let's just say you and I know Chet Hulgren is one of the most valuable players on that team with SGA. How could we see Chet Hulgren lead his team to a one seed in the conference. <laughs> a one seed! And feel that Wemby was the unanimous MVP. I give Wemby credit on being a great defender. Right? Let's be real here. So too is Chet. Look at Chet's shot blocking numbers. You want range? Look at Chet's three point shooting numbers. We understand, too, that the games Chet played in mattered because the team's not only in the playoffs, they're the one seed in the Western Conference. You mean to tell me that not one voter thought, hey, man, <laughs> this team's one seed, this dude's a baller, this dude's a shot blocker, I'm going to put him down as my rookie of the year. You mean to tell me not one voter thought that way? Come on. Come on. Anyway, look, the only thing stopping Minnesota at this point is possibly the T-Wolves. I'll concede Denver's a lot better than I thought. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right here, the play I like is Minnesota minus 120 to win the Western Conference. Folks, I don't even have to worry about the Celtics. Right? If Minnesota wins the Western Conference, and keep in mind, they're getting by the T-Wolves. If they play Denver, a team they've beaten three out of four times in the regular season, they would have home court. Right? The odds I'm getting are close enough to even money where... I can hedge the play with OKC if, in fact, OKC looks dominant against the Mavericks. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.